In this video, we're going to take a look at demand forecasting. And demand forecasting basically is forecasting the products that you need to manufacture over the next period of time. That could be a week, a month, a quarter, um, however you want to forecast them. And in Business Central, uh, there's a program that can assist you with doing that. So there's a program called Sales Analysis Views. And if I click on this, I've created a Sales Analysis View. I've called it Sales 1, and it's a item sales demo. So if I open this up, um, this just allows me to give it a code and a name. And I could set some filters here. And I tell it how I want to compress the data. So what this does is this goes out and looks at the item ledger entries. And it looks for item ledger entries of type sale. And then how do I want to compress them? So I can compress them by month, by day, by week, by quarter. Um, I've selected by month, so it's going to sum up all of the items, um, all of the sales for each item by month and present that to me in a way that I can use it. I've given it a starting date here because I'm in this demo database of 1-1 of 2019. There aren't a huge number of entries out here. There's 657 ledger entries that this is going to sum up for me. I also could, if, for example, if my products are divided uh, by product codes, department codes, whatever. I could put a filter in here for those, and then I could actually see this breakdown of my monthly sales by product type or department code, any way that I wanted to do this. I don't have any of these uh, products set up this way in the demo, so uh, I'm, I'm just going to uh, uh, use this as it was. And all we have to do in order to make this work is click the Update button. And uh, this has updated this um, summary of uh, activity on what I've um, what I've actually sold since uh, January 1st of 2019 up and through uh, today. So now that I've created my sales analysis view, I can go back to the card here, and what I do is pick Edit Analysis View. And this brings us up in a way that I can uh, I can tell it how I want to see things. So, for example, I'm going to show values as quarterly, um, I, or as quantity, excuse me. So I could also show it as sales dollars or cost, but I want to see the quantities that I have sold here. I've given it a date filter here of uh, January 1st of 2020 through December 31st of 2020, and I'm going to do this quarterly. So I should just simply see three, um, I mean, four different uh, numbers come up in our view, one for each quarter. In order to see them, I'm going to pick Show Matrix. And when I do that, here's quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. And I can see all of the items that I have sold by quantity. So for the Athena's chair, the Athens chair, sold a total of 137, 37 in the first quarter, 47 in the second, and so on and so forth. So um, this gives me a nice view at historical sales that I've done. One of the things kind of weird is that sales, of course, are a reduction to inventory. So natively, these show as negative quantities. But I can flip this little button down here that says show opposite signs. And now when I look at these, these are now positive numbers, which is what I want for my demand forecast. So I now have a, a way that I can view everything that has uh, uh, that I've sold over 2020. And I could also close this up. And I could tell it that I want to do this by month because I've compressed these by month. I now could look at a monthly view where I would see 12 months worth of data, January, February, March, so on and so forth. So I could, um, I could actually forecast by month based upon my historical sales during a period of time. So the next thing that we want to do here is to try to uh, export this file out to Excel. So our file has been exported, and um, this is the General Info tab, and here is the data that we have that's been exported. And you can see we have items, and then uh, when we export this, we get a lot of columns here that we don't need, so I'm just going to simply delete some of these. The only thing that I want to look at is monthly. So I don't need the sales, the accounting, I don't need any of these, so I'm just going to delete them. And the only thing that I actually need are the item numbers, the dates on which these were exported, and the quantities that we that we sold during these periods. 
For simplicity's sakes, I've placed a filter on here, and what I'm going to do is just uh, select a couple of these items to make our illustration here just a little bit uh, simpler. So I'm going to select these two items, and uh, I have sales for each of these from January through December. So I've got sales for uh, two different items here um, through the year, January through uh, December of 2020. So if I were going to do a forecast for uh, 2021, perhaps I'm anticipating that all of my uh, sales are going to go up, and so consequently all of these products are going to go up, and I could sort these by product. But uh, I could take uh, a column like this, and I could, uh, I could format this column so that this is a number with zero uh, decimal places, making it basically an integer. And then what I could do is I could, uh, I could take this quantity, and I could multiply it by 1.15 to increase my sales by 15%. And then I could just simply copy this down this entire row to increase all of my sales by 15%. And then in order to um, create my forecast, I can simply take all of these and I can paste the values in here to increase the all of my values up to my uh, the current value that I want to have 15%. Now notice these all changed again, but I don't care about those anymore because I've already pasted the values in here. So I'm going to minimize this spreadsheet a little bit here, and I'm just going to move it over on the side, and I have a template that has been created in order to upload things into the demand forecast. And so what I want to do here is that uh, I'm going to copy and paste this information over into my template. And uh, I can just simply copy the, uh, the entire area here. If I hold the control shift and move down, I get everything here. So we're going to take it over here and go on to the item and uh, paste this in. And out in the system, I've created a demand forecast called 2021. So I will save this, and this is now ready to upload into my demand forecast. So I've closed the uh, Excel spreadsheets here, and now what I can simply do is go to Configuration Packages, and we've created a configuration package here to import a production forecast. So I'm simply going to go to Excel Import. I'm going to point it to my Excel template that I just created. I'm going to just tell it to import it, and it's imported 24 records here, and I can go in, and I can actually look at these records uh, prior to bringing them in. These are my products, these are my dates and my quantities, so uh, everything looks good here. I can uh, validate the relationships on these records if I choose to. It just takes a moment. It's process one table, found no errors, so I'm just going to apply the data and this will import my demand forecast. So it's imported 24 rows, and my demand forecast is now imported. Exit back out of here. So I'm going to go to my demand forecast, and here I have my 2021 forecast that I've set up. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to set this to look at the uh, at the data by month, and then over here I'm going to put in a date filter of 01012121231221. And as you can see down at the bottom down here, my two items have been imported, and these uh, two, the 1965 W and the 1969 W, these are the quantities that we imported. Uh, in the uh, in the upload so our demand forecast is now ready to be used in planning and other features within business central the next year that we do planning or budgeting for our production we can simply go to uh, the configuration packages and what we can do is open this configuration package up and we can highlight this production forecast entry line pick Excel and pick export to Excel and this will actually export out our current forecast the 2021 forecast out into the Excel spreadsheet to be uh, modified and simply uploaded so we could change the forecast name call it 2022 and uh, then just simply upload it back into the system 
our Excel spreadsheet uh, has opened up with the template and we could simply go in here and rename this to 2022. We could copy that down the entire row for our 2020. Oops, that doesn't work. Let's do this. And we'll just highlight these three rows. So we now can actually have a 2022 budget. We could go in and we could, as we did before, we could create a new column out here, multiply these by 10%, 15, whatever increase we wanted, or we can modify them individually and then just simply upload this template as we did uh, in the previous example. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, remember to click below and subscribe for more.